Hey, y'all, welcome back to Can We Talk? Because if we can, let's talk about these basketball wives over there in Orlando. Season one, episode six, You've Been Served. Okay, the show's the show opens up with uh, Mackenzie and Rashad going to a horse farm to ride a horse in circles. She lets the people know that she usually goes home to Minnesota every weekend to visit Rashad. She also lets y'all know that she is not worried about things uh, between her and Rashad ending the way it did with Dwayne because they have a relationship built on friendship. There's a lot of trust <coughs> bullshit, and communication <coughs> bullshit, and re the relationship is effortless and she can see a long term relationship with him bullshit and all her other uh she can see a long-term relationship with him and all his other chicks okay that's all i gotta say about that <laughs> to me this this scene was so fake so forced uh, <laughs> so fake so forced whenever she puts her bonnet on she's bored with the situation okay <laughs> so yes i was too so Nikki has decided that she wants to have a pajama party and she invites all the girls. Okay. Morgan talks to her mom about her getting into it with everyone. And then she tells her mom that uh, she kept fighting for her relationship with her ex because she was afraid to deal with the abandonment she dealt with growing up as a child. She tells her mom that she blamed her for her dad not being a part of her life. And she didn't realize that her mom chose to be strong for herself. And she recalls the day her mom told her that uh, you can't make him a dad to you. And she remembers telling her, no, you can't. And she tells her mom that she should have never said that to her and she shouldn't have. And uh, if I would have tried that growing up, I wouldn't have no teeth today. OK, <laughs> so Mulan and Neat get together and Mulan shares that her sisters clipped her. For her Chanel bag and her $150,000 watch. Now, that's a different type of hurt, okay? They'd be your own family. It'd be your own family. But them heifers would not have been able to get off of the plane in Cincinnati. And I wasn't on another one to meet them because I would have beat the brakes out of them and got my stuff <laughs> back and jumped right back on the plane and got back to Orlando. Okay. <laughs> my heifers. Anyway, Mulan asked Nick how she feels about seeing Morgan at Nikki's party. Uh, Yeah, she asked Nick. How she, okay, so Nick basically tells Mulan that she's on some kumbaya type of stuff because she plans to be cool and listen if she wants to talk because staying mad is just too much pressure. And she goes on to say that um, if she's wrong, you know, that wrong is wrong and right is right. And when you do something wrong, you apologize for it and move on. Now, the whole time she talking, Mulan is rolling her eyes up and she biting her lips, child. She, she biting them so hard. She about to swallow them jokers, right? Uh, so she straight up tells Nick that she is not on that type of vibe because she's still mad about getting snuck. And she definitely don't appreciate Nikki and Danny laughing on a live about the situation. And she said that she's not coming to be cool or neutral. She's uh, on the give them what they give you vibe. And she will be coming with the mess to the party. So Mackenzie and Rashad are supposedly living in their love bubble. And it's boring as hell. The only thing that I picked up from this scene is that the dude is disingenuous and that this is just something for him to do until something more interesting comes along. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if, uh, if they're being shady with the editing, but old girl tells Rashad, I miss you. And she is met with silence. Okay. Silence. And she goes on to tell him how special this relationship with him is compared to her relationship with her ex. And he grinned and asking her if she holds it nearer and dear to her heart. And she tells him that she holds it nearest and dearest to her heart. And then she turns and asks a question back to him. And he says, absolutely. But quickly tells her that he doesn't have a title for this though. So basically he's saying, I ain't in no relationship with you though. Know? It ain't no title. And she's constantly trying to lead him into what she's expecting by asking questions and asking if he agrees and he lies and says he does. But then he tells her that if he were to have a side piece, he would probably just tell her so that she could have her option to do what she want to do with that. 
look for it. It's coming soon. <laughs> so <laughs> her insecurity is definitely showing because she keeps asking these questions for him to validate her. And she's like, um, and it's like I said from the beginning, this whole thing, boring. I can't even go deep. Boring. Okay. So Nick and Mulan meet up again. And they talk about Raheem, who's Dwayne's brother. And he was killed at his album release party. Nick tells how the girl that killed Raheem was threatening to burn a hole in Dwayne's chest right before she shot his brother. And she also credits her mom for saving both her and Dwayne by defusing the situation because she was getting ready to go jump the girl if she had, you know, gotten any closer to Dwayne. So big ups to moms, okay? Because that could have been all y'all slayed out there. Mulan recounts when uh, she got the news about her brother dying. It was right before she got on a plane. And she lets us know that she misses him every day. It's the night of the slumber party, right? And Nikki <laughs> is talking about she's no longer upset with Mulan and Neek. She's already squashed the beef. Uh, Ma'am, why would you be upset with them? Nikki? Make it make sense. You don't want to lie. You lied. She the one started all this mess. And I'm just like, girl, stop playing. You play too goddamn much. And be quiet. Just stop. <laughs> so Nick shows up first. And she in good spirits. You know, she having a good mood. And then Lindsay follows up with her belly. And then Mulan shows up in her sweats because she is not wearing PJs. Because she still has beef. And she needs to be ready to jump if she needs to. Okay? Yeah. Mulan is dressed to fight. She dressed to fight. <laughs> Megan shows up, and the last to show up are the double mint twins, Morgan and Danny. So, child, Morgan gets out of the car complaining because her baby daddy was able to locate her and have her serve with papers to lower the child support and to stop paying into their children's trust fund. And she is sure that Ashley passed on her information. And she probably did because you won't stop effing with her. So... <laughs> There you have it. Everyone was having fun. And then the dark clouds roll in. And immediately Morgan starts calling Ashley ugly. Talking about she was sitting over there looking stupid. And I'm like, this is so tiresome. OMG. Can y'all just come to one function and not try to start crap? Just one. Doubt it. So they immediately go into playing a game. And class... What happens every time they start to play a game? Anybody? Anybody? You are absolutely correct. Some bull-ish gets started and a fight breaks out. So let's see how this goes. The name of the game is Friendship Edition. And if I had hands, I would do the quote signs for friend, okay? So Danielle asked the first question, and there's really nothing to report about that. So let's move on. Ashley goes next and asks her question to Danielle. And her question is, what do you wish you got more credit for? Danielle says her patience to be able to come in and be in front of someone like Mackenzie is big. <laughs> it's big for someone, and she needs her goddamn credit, okay? For being able to do that. Mackenzie goes next and asks Neek, what has she been, oh, what has she been overthinking or who? Neek answers she's been overthinking about Dwayne. Megan asks her how she's feeling. And of course, the waterworks start because losing Raheem is still very fresh to them. Mackenzie runs over to hug and console her. Morgan offers words of encourage, encouragement. I can't even talk. And lets her know that they understand what she's feeling. They support her and Mackenzie 100% through the situation. And this is what frustrates me because Morgan will have these really sweet moments. And then it's like a light switch. She goes off to, back into her lunatic mode. And I just don't get it because she was just comforter, comforted Neek and um, Mackenzie. And then she goes next to ask her question. And she goes and directs her question straight for who other than Ashley, who lives rent-free in her head. Exactly. Ashley occupies too much space in this girl's head. Like, this is an obsession now, Morgan. You are obsessed. 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 And she asks Ashley, what do you need to vent about right now and permission to let it out? And Ashley is completely caught off guard and answers and says, do you want to go there right now or no? 
And Morgan says, yeah, let's do it. So Ashley says she would like to know where this whole sending uh, women to her ex comes from. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Morgan tells her that she asked when uh, she travels on the road, does she bring other women around to sleep with their men? And Ashley says, and I do not. And Morgan says, and you said that and left and I left it there, but you brought it here. So now Morgan tells Ashley that she has a question for her. And she asks, pause, 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 pause. You mean to tell me that Morgan is trying to imply because Ashley has answered no over and over again to this question that Morgan has now left it alone. But ain't that what Morgan was uh, going crazy over in episode one and two? So when you decided to leave it alone, because every chance you get, you bring it up. She's full of crap. <laughs> She's full of crap. She led this girl right down the little yellow brick road. She wanted her to come down so that she could jump her <sighs> for her question. Morgan is full of crap because even if she had not asked that question, it was still going to eventually get back to that. And now to this other thing that she's about to bring up. Okay. Morgan is full of crap. She's an angry little troll. Period. So Morgan asked uh, if she said, you sure about that? <laughs> and Ashley responds, yeah, I'm positive. And so Morgan asks if uh, she has her address. And Ashley says, I do not. Morgan points at her and she calls her a liar and she calls her manipulative. Now they're going back and forth and Morgan starts walking up on her saying, you know, you did, you know, you did. So stop lying. Now, Ashley, honey, you said you were mixed with black, but baby, why are you allowing this girl to walk up on you while you still sitting in a vulnerable state? At what point does your black part activate, gets activated, and you take a, a position of defense? Because ain't no way I'm going to let some angry heifer come walking up on me, pointing in my face, and I'm still sitting pretty with my legs crossed. Uh-uh. No, ma'am. You need to wake up that black side because fooling around with Morgan, you're going to get your behind toe up, okay? <laughs> Stop it. Mor Morgan, we, we see, I peep your game. You only going to walk up on someone that you think is weak because Neek sitting right there and y'all ain't squashed your beef. Neek threw something at you and you've been talking about how you want to get her back while you ain't walked up on her. But you're going to pick little old Ashley to walk up on that you know ain't going to do nothing. Girl, sit down. I can't stand that. Oh, <laughs> bully. Yeah, I said it. Bully. <laughs> And who going to check me? Who going to check her, boo? <laughs> okay. So, and hey, what's that girl? That, Emu, Limu, don't come over <laughs> here. You can't check nobody. So stay where you at, okay? <laughs> so Morgan points directly in her face and still actually sits there. Now security is trying to uh, get Morgan outside and tell Ashley, you know what I'm saying, that Morgan tells Ashley that she'll kill her over her kids. Danny jumps in and asks Ashley why she feels the need to insert herself into someone else's divorce. And she goes on to say, as women in this group, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we all know that things go on or whatever, talking about how the men lie behind closed doors and in our faces. And she feels like Ashley as a wife with that big old pretty ring on her hand should be the main person in the group trying to lift the women up in those types of spaces. Megan takes it upon herself to present Danny with the Girl Power Award because she handled herself so well today. Well, just wait, because it's about to come to an end real quick. Pause, <laughs> pause, mm -hmm. pause, pause, pause. So, Danielle, you believe that Ashley should be lifting y'all up, but every chance the two of y'all get, y'all bully her. Bully! <laughs> mean girls! <laughs> like, girl, what? These, these girls are stupid. Like, Danielle, you really thought you were saying something, and you don't believe what you're saying, because you don't even act like that on a daily basis. Like, everything that you're saying you need to take that same advice. Like, what are, what are you talking about? And Megan, girl, just stay seated and shut up. 
please with your washed out self. Stop. Okay. And I'm tired wigs. Megan, you make too much, want to have too much money to be walking around with them big hats on your head for a wig. Stop, girl. <laughs> now that I got that out of my system. <laughs> so after Megan hands her the award, Mulan and her confessional is like, itch, please. <laughs> she is not featuring Danny because she says that she tries to tear people down every chance she get when y'all ain't lifting her up. So Mulan takes the opportunity since they are all there to tell Danny that she thinks she's full of crap. And she pulls up the live of Nikki and Danielle laughing about hitting her. And Mulan tells her that she needs a PR and then rises up and all hell breaks loose. Morgan takes the opportunity to throw a shoe at Ashley. Mulan is trying to get at Danny. Danny's trying to get at Mulan. Security is getting hit upside the head with stuff. Danny and Morgan are carried outside and made to leave. And woo child, it's just a mess all around. And then we're just going to have to wait until next week to see what happens from there. And that was the end of the episode. This was quick, y'all. We got this done in 16 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please don't forget, like the video, comment, subscribe, uh, turn your notifications on. If you're um, a subscriber, make sure that you listen to this message right here. Hey, Lit Tea Talkers. You don't like that name? We can always work on it, but y'all do be talking some lit stuff in those comments. So real quick, we want to get your thoughts and we want to have you on our show. Send us a 30 second emoji. Sorry, Android users. Maybe next time of what your thoughts were about what happened on the show this week. And you never know when your head will pop up in our video. You don't want to miss it. So you have to be subscribed. Make sure that your notifications are turned on and we will see you possibly in the next video to send us your 30 second memoji you're going to start a new iMessage sorry android users it's only for iphone if you want to participate find an iphone in the two section you're going to put girl can we talk at icloud.com then go to the bottom left hand corner where you see that plus button and you're going to scroll down until you find memoji once you're there click record watch the 30 second countdown make sure you're paying attention when you're done, click stop, and then you'll get the send button. Bye. All right. Don't forget, we record on Monday and Wednesdays normally. We're off this week, but we are reviewing Housewives of Potomac, Married to Medicine, Basketball Wives LA, and Orlando. If you have any thoughts about next week's show, send it to us. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye. Bye.